Hi, this is Paul Slack. It's Good News Planet speaking to Larry Bach. Hi, Larry. How are you? Hi, I'm very well. Thank you for having me. Thank you for doing the good things that you're doing. You're the executive director of the USA Science and Engineering uh, Festival, which is going, to, which is hosted by Lockheed Martin. And tell me if this is correct. It's starting in April, April 28, 29, 2012, in Washington D.C. Uh, correct. The festival actually runs a full month, so it's the entire month of April, but it culminates in a finale three-day expo on April 27th through 29th. Fantastic. Okay, tell us the origination and what it's all about. Yeah, so the premise of the festival uh, is society gets what it celebrates. So, you know, as a society, we celebrate Lindsay Lohan and uh, Paris Hilton, and we generate a lot of Lindsay Lohan and Paris Hilton wannabes, but we don't celebrate science and engineering. And as a result, there's sort of been a dramatic decline in the number of Americans pursuing, you know, positions in these fields. Uh, so our idea was to put on the world's largest uh, celebration of science and engineering uh, and celebrate science and, and engineering in the same way that we celebrate, you know, uh, athletes, pop stars, you know, uh, and so forth. Um, uh, so our event is really uh, kind of a unique type of event. It's more like a uh, art or music or literary festival than it is like a science fair. So it's not a scientific poster session. It's a giant celebration of science and engineering. Aha, uh -huh. that sounds marvelous. Well, I was definitely interested. I love science. About 30, 40% of good news is science and health related. Um, but uh, does it start, though, first, you know, I mean, there's celebrities in every kind. Jonas Salk is a, is a celebrity. Um, it just depends on the person's perspective, right? Well, uh, so our target audience is K through 12 students and their families. And, uh, you know, while you may know Jonas Hall, you ask most young people to name a famous scientist, and maybe they'll come up with Albert Einstein, but then you ask them to name a living scientist, and they're really dumbfounded. Um, uh, so we do not have, you know, role models in science and engineering that, stu that young people can identify with today because we're not celebrating the current Jonas Salk. I agree. I agree. Uh, you know who, though, uh, is a, somehow has made it up there? Well, there's a reason why. I live on the corner of the Museum of Natural History, and I've uh, interviewed Neil de, de, de Graff here uh, uh, a bunch of times. And uh, I believe he's like in the top five of uh, twi Twitters. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, which is a good one for uh, for the science world, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he is exactly the type. You know, he is exactly the type of person uh, that we want to identify and create more of. Uh, you know, one is not enough. So. He said. He said at, a, at one of the National Arts Club events. I guess we honored him there. Uh, that uh, he was voted the 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 number one sexiest uh, astrophysicist. And, uh, and then, it, but it was 10 years ago, he said. <laughs> but he said, how many astrophysicists are there? <laughs> and can you name the runner-up? <laughs> no. <laughs> Do you know? No, no. <laughs> was it you, Larry? Exactly, no, 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 no. That's exactly the problem. So, uh, so, so, so where can we, I mean, but is it put in perspective? So in the 8th, ninth, 10th, I mean, I think that's probably... One of the opportunities, I think it's a great outreach that you're doing, obviously, um, because that's when you do. So let's make a show. Well, you have a show, right? But the, the only, you need like an American Idol of uh, science and, and, and uh, combination to entertain. Is this sort of like we well, have some showbiz there? It sounds to me like you are. Uh, yeah. I mean, when you come to our event, you see science celebrated with uh, art, theater, comedy, music, you know, film uh, in all of those different ways. So yes, we have we have events that are almost like American Idol. We have an event called Who Wants to Be a Mathematician that's exactly you know formatted like an American Idol contest, but focused on mathematics. Um, you know, we have uh, we have science fashion shows. Uh, we have science celebrities like you know Neil deGrasse Tyson, but you know we'll have Bill Nye, the science guy, and the MythBusters uh, there. Uh, we have, uh, you know, science in art, you know, both using science uh, to 
uh, uncover new artworks, but also using science to create new art. So um, uh, we have theater performances, um, you know, uh, so we have really tried to celebrate it in all those different ways. Aha, uh -huh. okay. And how do you, in addition to, I mean, this is a, a physical location uh, here down in uh, Washington, uh, D.C., um, for how many how many people usually attend something like this? Well, in our event last year, we had 650,000 people attend our finale two-day expo, and we had just shy of a million people uh, attend the entire festival, meaning uh, the festival that occurs in that month before that finale expo, plus we had uh, t um, 23 satellite, I'm sorry, 80 satellite events in 23 other states on the same day as we had that finale expo. So uh, the festival really takes place all across the country. We don't organize all the satellite events, uh, but on the same day as we organize our event in Washington, D.C., we have all these other events anchored to it. So the, the combined uh, attendance through, uh, between our events, the pre-expo events, and the satellite events, we had about a million people participate last year. Aha, uh -huh. so how did you and your co-founder come up with this idea? Uh, so these science festivals, while they're a completely new phenomena in the United States, they've been underway in uh, Europe and Asia for years. Um, and I was living abroad for a year uh, in Europe and saw these science festivals, and I said, well, this is uh, something that we have to import to the States because um, uh, in my, I was just retiring from my career as an entrepreneur, high-tech entrepreneur, and I could not recruit Americans uh, to the last few companies I had started up, uh, be not because I didn't want to, but because they just weren't going into those fields. So um, uh, I saw these festivals going on in Europe, and I thought, well, what a great idea to bring to the States. Uh, and since then, um, uh, a large number of science festivals are springing up all around the country. So we probably have uh, about 10 major science festivals around the country. Well, we try to uh, brand ourselves as is the the only national science festival. So um, uh, most of the other ones are very regionally oriented. We we brand ourselves as the, the national science festival. You know, we have this show. It's it's on it about 700 times a, a, a day or a week. Uh, the Big Bang Theory. Oh yeah, TV exactly. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, th I think it's one for the scientists. I don't know. I, I uh, love in, it. In, in, in um, an unusual fact, way. <laughs> I, I, I love, love it, it too. And, I, uh, and I, I'm working very hard to try to get some of those cast members or, if, or, or even the writers uh, who may be even more of interest to our group, uh, to our, ex our event. So uh, uh -huh. do that. Do that. That's great. Yeah, no, uh, I'm, you know, when I have any connect, if you have any connections, I'd love them, but uh, no. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk a, little, a bit after this, uh, uh, and because I'm, I love this stuff, okay, and I'm, you know, when I started Good News uh, broadcast uh, 13 years ago, you know, they said Good News, Good News, you know, who wants to watch Good News? You know, basically, it's boring. You know, I mean, someone walks somebody across the street, even though these are uh, without these kinds of things. Uh, a, a woman doesn't get across the street, and two, actually, the street doesn't get built, okay? Exactly. Because there's nobody that knows how to build it, and that's what they call science, and they call engineering, and they call that kind of stuff, right? So everything around us basically has some science relationship to it, even our, of course, our bodies of them, of, of and to themselves, right? So you're, uh, you're absolutely right. You're, in <laughs> fact, our, our first festival, we actually called it the Science of You you know, describing every place in your life where science takes place, whether it's your, your art, your music, your health, your planet, um, your, your security, your heroes, and so forth. There's no doubt about it. When I, I worked on, the, I had a fortunate opportunity to do the Brain Series and for PBS many, many years ago. And uh, we started it with a guy named Greg Luganis, and we just put the camera on his feet walking up the diving board. Greg's not going up the diving board without the brain and without the body. <laughs> exactly. So be it. So, so how, can, uh, how can the world uh, um, be involved? Now, you say, I love this satellite concept. So can somebody who hears this uh, uh, interview that we're doing, what would they do if they wanted to do, you know, like in their own house something? Or what, what can somebody do? Yeah, so, um, yeah, so uh, the satellite events is a great initiative that people around the country, or if not around the world, this year we're actually expanding our satellite concept internationally. So they actually can come to our website, 
uh, and uh, we have a special link for a create a satellite event. And then we share with them best practices on how to create a festival and then help, mar help them market their festival, you know, through our network. Great. Super. All right, Larry, is there any other kinds of things we should share at this moment? And we're going to talk again before because actually I'd like to talk for, you know, see how we can help to, to do more because I'm really a believer in what you're doing. Yeah. And I well, love I the mean, way you're I, doing I, it. I'd just like to sort of end, you know, sort of saying, look, you know, there is no other event in the United States where you can get exposed to more science than in four years at Harvard University and have more fun than at a week at Disneyland. So, and it's free. So, uh, you know, we would love to get as many people to our events as possible. Sounds great. What's the website, Larry? Uh, www.usasciencefestival.org. Okay, very good. And let me ask your last question that we ask all our guests is, uh, so what's good news for you, Larry? What's good news for me? You know, yes. uh, when, when we did our event the first time or the second time, and I had people come up to me that were hosting an exhibit that were in the high-tech field, and they said to me, hey, there were 100 people lined up all day long to see my exhibit. Thank you for making me cool, look cool in front of my kids, <laughs> because for the first time, they sort of said, you know, wow, you know, da dad or mom, you're doing something really important. Look at all these people lined up to check it out. Fantastic. Larry, thanks for doing a good thing. Talk to you Thank again. Thank you. Thank you for helping us get the word out.